for tuning in. As you can see today, I am making some tumblers. <laughs> um, so I have four of them on the turner, and I mixed up enough resin to do two, and I have the other resin mixing up over on my mixer to do the other two. I don't like to mix it all up at once because I don't work fast enough, and then I end up having to rush on the last two. So I'll cut the video so you don't have to watch me mixing all that resin. <laughs> um, but I've got the resin for the first two mixed. So um, these are 20 ounce tumblers and they're stainless steel. They do have a bit of a texture on them so I don't paint them or um, sand them or anything. I just pour right over them. But you can always paint them if you want, um, if you don't want the silver to show through. So three of these tumblers I'm doing in a navy white combination. And then the fourth one is gonna be lilac and silver. So if you were concerned about the silver um, showing through, you could paint the tumblers black or navy blue, something, you know, or, you know, lilac for this one, something that just blends in. But really, I found that the resin cover is really good. I don't really have a problem with the, the, the whatever, the tumbler surface showing through the resin. Maybe in a few spots here and there where Maybe I put the glitter on a little too heavy, but it actually looks kind of cool. I don't mind it. So that's up to you. That's just a personal preference. So I have four ounces of resin mixed up. I'm using Naked Fusion today. Um, so it's two ounces per tumbler. And let me just uh, get this poured into the cups and then I'll show you the colors I'm using. All right, so now for the colors. Um, these are the navy ones. So what I do to make navy is I use black and I use a brighter blue. So this is Just Resin Magic Blue Pigment Paste. This is a shimmer. And then the black, I'm using the Armor Art Black. And I put the black on first and use it as um, almost like a background color. And then I put the blue over it and they blend together and create this beautiful navy. But you could use navy if you wanted to. Um, but if you use two colors, just remember they are going to blend because the turner, the tumblers are turning, and the colors move around and they'll blend together. So whatever you choose, if you're going to do green and red, you're going to have areas where they blend together and create probably some shade of brown or something. So think about that when you're choosing your colors. I'm going to use about that much of the blue. I want these to be very, very opaque. I don't want to risk having any transparency issues at all because I don't want the silver to really shine through. Um, I want the colors <laughs> to be the main focal point. Okay, now for the black. So this Armor Art Black is really, really hard to squeeze. This should probably be in a jar. But... I want opaque black, so I'll show you how much I use. There's no, I can't tell you many drops because there's no drops. <laughs> this is just coming out in a, a little glop here. So I'm gonna use about that much of it. I might add more, we'll see what it looks like when I mix it up, but I want it to be completely opaque. I even cut that the top of that tube to make it wider to, to help the black come out better and it's just so hard to squeeze but it's such a nice pigment it's such a beautiful solid black so i just wish it was a little easier to use but i love it okay so now my white so this is the mix all make sure you shake your mix all and i usually do 10 drops per one ounce to get opaque white and I have like, huh, I would guess that's less than a quarter ounce. So I'm just gonna put two drops in here. They also come out, the drops come out much larger in this container versus the little, the small size. This white is gonna create some beautiful lacing effects. That's why I love using this white, this Mix All White. If you wanna do lacing or oceans, this is the white that you need. All right, and then for the glitter, I love glitter. 
Um, all right, so I'm using two glitters. I'm going to mix them together. So these are both by Glitter Makes It. Dark as Night, which is this beautiful navy, and then Girl's Best Friend, which is a white with just a hint of iridescence to it. I mostly want navy glitter, but um, I'm going to add just a touch of the white, too. So my rule of thumb is one scoop of glitter per tumbler. <laughs> you can always use less or more, depending on how much glitter you like. I don't completely cover them in glitter. You probably saw the pictures. For me, the glitter is just an accent. But you can definitely use more, or you don't have to use any. Ever you like. Then um, I am using one more thing. I'm not mixing this into resin though. So this I just got from Advanced Metallics. This is actual metal and it is very, very fine. Like the size of glitter. I don't want this to come out everywhere. It looks like it's going to. Like little tiny little tiny, tiny, tiny metal flakes. And this is copper. So the design I'm gonna be putting on these um, has copper accents. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to just sprinkle just a tiny bit of this over top in little spots and just see what happens. I've never used it before, but I wanna try that. Okay, so got all the colors mixed. As you can see, I taped off the bottoms. You don't have to tape them off. I do this because there's a little seam and I like having that stainless base showing, but you don't have to do that. I've made some where I, I resined all the way down to the bottom. That's totally up to you how you wanna do it. I also do not resin the bottoms and you'll see that in the second step. Um, where I pull the resin down to the edge, but I don't go over the bottom, but you can go over the bottom if you want. I've had trouble with it, um, where it gets lumpy on the bottom and then you have to sand it because the cups don't sit level, so. All right, so just turn the turner on. My turner rotates the cups in either direction. So when I'm working, I like to have them rotating away from me. So they're coming up from the bottom towards me and then going away from me. Because when I pour the resin, I'm you don't wanna pour the resin on the top because it's just gonna fall right off. You actually wanna try and pour it here. So as you're pouring, it's gonna move up and start to spread and stick a little better so when it comes around, it doesn't all fall off. So I try to pour here. If the tumblers were turning towards me, I'd have to pour over here and I can't see that. So that's why I want them to turn away from me. So if you get a turner that only turns in one direction, make sure you have it facing the right way. <laughs> um, but a lot of them will rotate either way. If it's going the wrong way, you just have to shut it off and then turn it back on and it'll usually change the direction. All right, so I've got everything mixed up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the black and then put on the blue. So when you're doing this, if you're using two colors, if you do it the way I do it, the color you put on second is gonna be the more prominent one, and the first color is more of like an undertone. There's all kinds of ways you can put resin on tumblers. You don't have to do it exactly how I do it. Um, you know, you could do for, go for more of a blend. You could do half and half, where you have one color on the top and one color on the bottom like an, uh, an ombre, I never know how to say that word. <laughs> um, you know, there's all different ways to pour it. But the way I do it, I put the base color on first, like this, and I spread it around, and then I put the other color on top. So the blue is gonna be more prominent. So I just pour my base color on, and there's always a little bit left and I just keep that just in case I need to add more. And then I take my stick 
And I'm just gonna, it's almost like frosting a cake. I'm just spreading it out. You notice I'm not trying to get it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. I'm just moving it around right now, just spreading it around. Now that I've gone all the way around, now I'm gonna pull it down. And it goes around a few times. You're not gonna coat it completely perfectly the first time around. So I usually take two or three times around and just move the resin, put it where I want. And you'll see there's gonna be some spots where it's a little thinner than others. That's not a big deal because I'm gonna be adding the blue. So that, that will fill it in and I can always add more black too. All right, so now same thing, just pulling it up towards the lip. And at this point, I'm not real worried about getting resin, you know, on the inside of the cup or anything. If you do it like this and just pull it up to the top, it does not wrap around, but we, I do wash it off um, or wipe it down before it dries. Now I'm pulling it back away from the lip and getting rid of some of this extra resin. And the reason I'm doing this is because these cups are not the um, straight cylinder. They're, th they're narrower at the bottom and wider at the top. And what happens with this type of a cup is the resin actually tends to flow this way, even though it looks like it should be flowing downhill. Um, if you think about gravity, it's wanting to go down to the bottom underneath the cup and at the bottom the cup is slanted this way so the resin is flowing this way and you'll end up with almost like a little hump around the rim so that's why I pull the resin back just to avoid that little hump so I'm just doing the same thing with this one and this took a lot of practice so if you've never done this before go easy on yourself. Don't be like hypercritical. Don't get impatient. If you can't just uh, <laughs> spread the resin around like a champ the first time you do this. It took me several, several cups to get good at this part of it. I, I made the biggest mess with probably the first 10 cups that I made. And this part too, just figuring all this out. It's taken me a lot of trial and error. So if you're not perfect the first time around, just be gentle with yourself. <laughs> and I know I got a spot coming up here that I need to get some more resin on. So I'm just gonna pull it from up there. All right, and then pulling it back again. Okay, so that's the first coat with the black. Now I'm just gonna hit it with a heat gun real lightly. I'm not trying to move it or get it overly warm. I'm just popping some bubbles. Now time for the blue. So now the way you pour this second coat is really gonna determine what this looks like. So if you pour it this, the way I poured the black and you pour it evenly, around the whole cup, you're gonna end up with a very even but beautiful design. You could also pour it a little more randomly and not try to have the blue evenly distributed. So you could do it like that or you can do it more evenly. And you're gonna get a different look depending on how you pour this. But either way, they're really pretty. So experiment with different application methods. So now this is where the heat gun is your most valuable tool because the heat gun is what's gonna move all this around and create the really cool effects. So first thing I'm doing is just warming it up. I'm not trying to move anything yet. I just want to warm the resin up. And then you'll see it start to slide down the cup, almost like water. That's when you know you can move it. 
So then, now what I'm doing, see, I'm just moving it around, up and down, pushing that blue where I want it to go. So you can see there's some darker streaks, there's some brighter blue streaks. That's because of how I poured that. This one I poured a lot more evenly, so it's going to be a more evenly, even distribution of the color. There is some spots here at the top where there's more black, but I'm gonna move the resin up there and kind of fill that in with some of the blue. So this also takes a lot of practice. You don't wanna shoot the resin <laughs> over the lip of the cup. You know, you wanna make sure the resin doesn't just go flying off the cup. So practice with this. Um, but once you get it, it's, it's really fun. You get some, it's just beautiful, I think. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the white. Now this is going to be very, very subtle. I don't want the white to take over. Oh, there's a hair on this one. Let me, I'm gonna wait till it comes around again and then scoop it off. All right, looks like it's gone. Okay, good. Oh, adventures. All right, so now time for the white. Now, like I was saying, I don't want the white to take over. So I am going to just put <laughs> the tiniest little dribs of white on here. Now, obviously, if you want more white or, you know, if you're using silver, whatever your accent color is, if you want more of it, obviously put more on. But I am just doing these little streaks. And then back to the heat gun. So again, just warming it up before I try to move it. And you don't want to move it too much. I'm just kind of touching it with the heat gun and then moving away from it because if you move it too much it blends in too much So that is all I'm doing for the white. And it's going to continue to move around. It's not going to stay where you put it. So don't fall in love with how it looks because then you'll be disappointed <laughs> after it keeps moving. All right, now time for the glitter. So with the glitter, I take a fairly good size scoop and I just kind of drag it and let it fall wherever it wants to fall on the cup. And I try to not put it all in the same place. I try to vary it up a little bit, have some in the middle. And now I'm just gonna kind of watch it and see where the glitter is settling. And if I have a spot that needs a little more accent or a touch more white or more glitter, then this is when I'll add it. But where it's kind of moving to now is close to how it's gonna be when it cures. So this white, I wanna blow that out. It's just a little bit too strong. Okay, so these are pretty good. I'm going to just hit them with my heat gun. If I can find my heat gun. Where's my heat gun? Oh, here it is. I'm just going to hit them with the heat gun real quick because when you put that glitter on, it definitely brings some air bubbles in because you're putting such a big glop of resin on there. Um, but I don't want to use the heat gun. Oh, this is a torch. <laughs> I don't want to use the heat gun because I don't want to blow anything around anymore. Now all I want to do is pop bubbles. So that's why I'm using the torch. All right. 
Last step, take a baby wipe and just hold it in place around the lip and let it turn all the way around. So if you did get anything over the edge, this will clean it up. Okay, so let me get this open. So I'm just gonna use my fingers and just try to sprinkle. Hopefully I don't regret this decision and have to remake these. It's kinda hard with the gloves on, isn't it? Mm, let me try, I don't know, I don't wanna take too much. I have these little tiny spoons. Yeah, I think that's, that's really pretty. It's very subtle because it is so tiny. I think that worked pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna let these turn. I'm gonna mix up the resin for the other two and I will be right back. Okay, I got everything set. Um, I already mixed up the blue. I, didn't, I figured you didn't wanna see that again. But for the purple one, I am using the white mix all is actually going to be the base color. So I'm going to put 10 drops in here. Well, maybe seven. Those are big drops. <laughs> I'm still used to the little bottle of mix all. All right, then for the purple, I'm using this violet mica powder from Artisan. And they want a lilac tumbler. And I don't really have a lilac pigment, but I thought that the purple with the white would probably make a nice light purple color. Then for the silver, I'm using the Let's Resin metallic powder. And I am not even gonna scoop anything out of here. A little bit of this goes a long way. I'm literally just gonna put my stick in and whatever sticks to it is what I'm using. Um, because I have just the tiniest bit of resin in there. Lid. And then for the glitter, I'm using Big Boy Hue from Glitter Makes It. I love this glitter. It's purple it's got dashes of red and green and blue it's just so pretty i'm just gonna stir it up a little bit first because these glitters that have different size pieces tend to separate and the little pieces tend to fall to the bottom of the bag dropped my spoon. It's all right. Look at how pretty that is. All right, so the next step after these cure, I'm going to put the designs on them and then top coat. So that's the next part that you'll see after this. So you'll see how I finish them and how I um, pull the top coat all the way down to the bottom without going over the bottom, if that's something that you wanna see. So then you'll want to stick around for the next part of this video. Okay, I am back. I got the decals on and I have um, peeled off the tape. So when I peel off the tape, 
I wait about 18 hours or so after I pour um, the resin. I use my heat gun, I just warm it up and then just peel the tape off. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of residue that gets under the tape. It's real easy to get off. I just use my, um, my little Cricut scraper. You could use something pointy or even a little um, razor blade. Just scrape it off, it comes off real easy. Wipe it with rubbing alcohol. Got the decals on, um, let me turn this on and get ready to pour the top coat now. So for the top coat, I use about one ounce per tumbler. So I have four ounces mixed up here. And I'm using the same resin that I did the color part with. And again, I have them turning away from me just like when I poured the color. And it's pretty much the same pouring technique. Just kind of zigzag it on, but I wanna make sure that I go onto the silver part at the base. Okay, and I have a little bit of resin left. I'm just gonna keep that, because I'm gonna to have to add little bits here and there just to touch them up so same technique just spreading like a cake and as you do this you'll see very quickly where you need to add more resin and where you might have too much <laughs> and then I'm just pulling it down towards the bottom I'm not going over the edge because I don't resin the bottoms of my tumblers. But just right up to the edge on the top and the bottom. All right, then I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun. And this will pop the bubbles and help it to spread out and even out a little bit. And then after it's kind of evened out, then I can see where I need to put some more resin. Okay, so I'm trying to sit in a position where the light is making a nice streak across the top of the cup. So I can see the spots where the resin is low. So I'm just looking for little fish eyes. Okay, I'm gonna use a heat gun again. And the heat gun is really, really important to making sure these are smooth as glass. I can still see a couple little spots that need some more. So, as you can see, that took several uh, <laughs> applications of resin and then the heat gun and then back to the resin. Um, but it's real important to do and just really inspect it real closely. Make sure that there's, um, you know, no fish eyes, no bubbles, no divots, no spots that you missed. And I see a little back of something on this one. It's always fun trying to get hair off of a moving target. Okay, all right, and then the last step is just to clean up the edges, just like I did with the color. Okay, so I'm gonna let these spin for 24 hours and cure completely before I take them off of the tumbler turner. Um, so I'll be back. I'll show you how I put my logo on the bottom if you wanna see that. So I will see you in 24 hours. Okay, the cups are all cured. They look amazing. 
So now I'm just gonna put my logo on them. So what I do, I turn them all so they're facing the same way, so the fronts are facing me. And I use this stays on solvent ink. Um, this is permanent ink. It does not come off with soap and water. You have to use a solvent to get it off. And it comes in a lot of colors. I use pink because that is my color. My colors are pink and yellow. Um, I'm just gonna dab it on a paper towel real quick because I used the silver color last. And then all I do is stamp them. Okay, they're all done. So I hope that this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. But otherwise, I hope to see you guys again in the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.